That's going to lead us to our educational segment, which is about the recent COVID statistics. Because if you're looking at them, it's factual that the American economy has to reopen. I think even if Biden gets elected, he's going to reopen. I don't think he'll lock down the economy. It's just there's no support. There's zero stats out there to support it. Now, Trump's been firing people, hiring people, Dr. Fauci. Whatever. I mean, a lot of these guys want to speak their mind. And I think Trump kind of wants to control them and say, only say this, which, which is wrong, right? I, I mean, we want to be honest and open about it. Even if we disagree with it, we want to be honest and open. So he just hired a guy. His name is Dr. Scott Atlas. Atlas has a 25-year career at top elite medical centers, doctors, patient cares, 15-year career in public policy, working on healthcare policies, and just resume is unbelievable, unbelievable. And he is getting torn apart basically because he's associated with Trump now, right? So anyone associated with Trump automatically gets destroyed. So he's getting torn apart by the CDC director which is amazing, which his name is Robert Redfield, is saying that everything Atlas is saying, quoting him, everything he says is false. And again, as people who want to get back to work, who want to send their kids to school, this isn't about politics. This is about factual. This is about science. We say we are, it's about science. It's about science. It's about science. It really is about science. Open up the economy. Because... According to the CDC, who is actually insulting Scott Atlas, who wants to open up the economy and doesn't believe in lockdowns? This is according to the CDC. The infection fatality rate for COVID, if you're between 0 and 19 years old, 99.997%. So basically zero. The infection fatality rate, if, if you're under 20. It's almost zero. 20 years old to 49, 99.98. Again, 0.02%. So if you're looking at this, where, where the survival rate, where, where the fatality rate, it, it's 0.5% for 50 to 69. It's, it's next to nothing if you're under 49. If you're over 70, it's 94.6. 94.6. Even based on those numbers, we should open up the economy. But if you're under 69, are you really going to, I mean, based on this data, right, get an infection fatality rate for COVID, taking all the numbers, not even, I mean, we're including the numbers of New York who decided to put infected people in nursing homes, which is, you know, just, you should have just lit them in fire. It, it would have been quicker killing all these people. It, it's so, it, it's terrible. I know it was a mistake. I just hate the fact that no one could just stand up and say, hey, we didn't know better. It's okay. Nobody knew this is something that's new, but everyone denies it's everybody's fault, depending on what side you're on. The fact is it happened. And we took those statistics and that's the reason why Numbers exploded and everybody was shitting their pants with, with COVID coming to the U.S. You know, got boats along the coastlines for hospitals that we never even used. We didn't understand anything about it. But because of that decision, it inflated everything. Hospitalization rate. Hospital, look at, at New York, California, were, were overly crowded. Death rates were 7 8%. But now look at them. Now we have more statistics. We know more about this disease. And based on this data, Atlas saying that we should open up the economies, say that children do not frequently spread the virus to adults, citing numerous global studies. How many kids do you know have spread the virus to adults? I don't know any. I probably now know, not personally know, but heard, I know probably half, about 100 people, a little bit more than that, that have had the virus. I think two or three said that yeah, they still have lingering effects after a few months later. Very, very few, right? People worry about what are the long term effects? We haven't studied them. Well, you know, look at the people who had it. We all know people who had COVID by now. Are they out there working? And Chris Cohen was on TV. He had it and he had it pretty bad, yet he was able to do his entire show, which I thought was, was really cool on CNN. And I watched him talking about how he has a coronavirus, how bad it is, how, you know, just in his house with his family separated from him. He was doing it from his basement. His parents thought, like, he was, he was doing a show while he was infected. He wasn't dying. But we know a lot more about this. Atlas, based on the study, it suggested schools open up. It suggested that, hey, you know, if kids get infected along with healthier Americans, 
it might not be the worst idea since their immunity would protect others. That sparked forget it. What, kids getting infected. Uh, well, we know that kids get infected. I, I, that, that's a bold statement. And I could see that, you know, bothering certain people. But if we're looking at the stats where kids, get, they're getting infected, it, it's barely a cold for them. Barely. It's not the flu. It's not even close to being the flu for kids when they get infected. He also said we have to make sure we protect people in a danger zone. But the most th important thing he was adamant about is saying we need to end the lockdowns in all states. We need to. We still have lockdowns in, in, in uh, of 75% in, in New York City and California, not even close to be fully open, in areas of California. In fact, you have Disney just come out and say they're laying off 28,000 people, not furloughing, laying them off, and they blame California. They blame California due to their restrictions being exaggerated in California for their unwillingness to allow Disney to open. That's a quote. They said, we need to cut 28,000 jobs. And what's going on there in California? You have the highest tax rates in the nation, wildfires everywhere, electricity being shut off without working, the fund of police, Pelosi, I mean... In LA, Sam Fran, it's, you know, and I have subscribers there. I'm not talking, you know, I have great people there that I know. I, I like California. I used to love visiting. But man, it's like, are, are you not looking at stats? Are you not looking at, at, at the people? You're not listening to the people. Because I talk to my friends in New York City and they think we're crazy to be putting our kids back to school because they're just conditioned by everything that they're watching and reading from New York that's local, talking about the negatives. When we take everything as a whole, there's much, much more positives. Well, this, the San Francisco Bay, London Breed, is letting restaurants open up at 25% capacity indoors. Thank you. Nice job. A little late now. A lot of these restaurant owners are out of business. But again, we've been open up since May in Florida, in Georgia. We're okay. We saw rates spike. Hospitalization rates stayed low. Very low fatality rate for people who got the infection. And now our numbers are pretty good. And they're going to go up a little higher as more and more economies start opening up. That's normal. Again, things change. A death rate goes high. We have to look at It's all about the data. It's, and that's what we want to look at here. That's what I want to look at. I try to, to bring this to you being non-biased. But getting back to Scott Atlas here is so many doctors have been ripping this guy. The Stanford University Medical School's top faculty says that Atlas is undermining public health authorities and the credible science that guides effective public health policy? Really? Why well, that came from Stanford? What a surprise. Chicago Tribune published an article to meet Scott Atlas, Trump's new doctor on the coronavirus task force, who has no expertise in public health or infectious diseases. I have no expertise in that. But I felt like I've been pretty right so far in this, at least helping you from an investment perspective of how our economy is going to get murdered from this thing. Tell you guys to, to sell. I needed to be a doctor because I can tell you most of the infectious doctors, if you listen to them, have been 100 percent wrong, and they're still wrong today. They just they're flip flopping too late. It's like telling you to sell Amazon three years ago and telling you to buy it now when you should have been doing the opposite. If you did the opposite of what these guys said and took it serious when they said not to, and then not so serious now that they take it, you'd be perfectly fine if you did the opposite. So give me a break. Yet Atlas authored over 100 peer-reviewed scientific papers. These are in top medical journals. Served 14 years at Stanford's Hoover Institution. Elite Hoover's, he, he's a Stanford guy, and they, they're coming out against him. But it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace where politics and power trumps the well-being of our children, of our life. All because, you know, you don't like Trump, and this guy's associated with Trump. But the agenda is, hey, you know what? Let's scare the shit out of everyone to the point where businesses remain closed, kids are forced to stay home, and people are losing their jobs. It's crazy. I mean, it's crazy. You want to know how crazy? Mark my words. Because when we look back at COVID and our response, right, to America with COVID, we're going to look at it as we looked at McCarthyism. The blacklisting people in the U.S. saying they were communists, belonging to the Communist Party with zero facts. This is in the 50s. I'm going to talk about how we locked down the entire nation for a disease 
that kills fewer people than the flu. Fewer people than flu. And there's still no vaccine for COVID. Those numbers are going to go down once we have a vaccine. But why am I ranting on this? Because if you're on the left, you probably stopped listening to me a while ago and think, you know, people are going to die from COVID. Listen, it's about you. It's about investments. It's about looking at the facts. If they change, I'll be the first to tell you. If I recommend this stock and a the thesis change, I'm going to let you know immediately, even though some people get attached to stocks and they get pissed off. I've hired editors that didn't work out and promoted my products on them saying, hey, you know, this guy's great and he's awesome. But he was. And then, you know, some of them did a bad job. It's my responsibility to get that guy out of there and put someone in his seat or their seat that's going to make you money. And it's a tough decision. But every time I've done that, it's been for the better for my company. It's been for the better for my clients. It's been for the better for you. That's what this is about. You. Because I can tell you, COVID, all this shit's going to go away after the election. We're going to get a vaccine very soon. Likely from J&J or Pfizer, if I had to guess, it's going to be by the end of this month. They're very, very close. Very, very close. Going to be no need for the media and our politicians to lie about COVID anymore since the election's going to be over. And you know what that means? It's going to be pedal to the metal for our economy, for the stock market. Another stimulus package is going to be announced to the tune of what did I have? Two trillion dollars. When did we ever think that sending people or businesses one and a half trillion or passing that stimulus would not be enough? <laughs> one and a half trillion is not enough. It's not enough. We got a two, three trillion. We got to get more. Two and a half. Are you kidding me? We saved our entire financial system with five hundred billion dollars. We just already provided six and a half trillion to backstop how many different businesses? Bonds, CLOs, markets, airlines, keep going, travel industry. Another one and a half trillion is coming, and people think that's not enough. The Fed said that we're going to keep short-term rates at zero for another three years, basically yield curve control. People are starting to travel again. We're seeing that right now. Look at the statistics. Look at the airlines. I cover all this stuff. I get information sent to me directly on all these stats on a daily basis. They're starting to go to casinos again. You look at the gaming in Vegas. It was only down 22% from last year. That's not that bad, considering a lot of these places are just starting. You know, they opened up already. But we're looking at 99%. 99% decline because everything was closed. 22%. Obviously, we're getting better and better. People feel more comfortable, and they're starting to open up. You're going to start staying in hotels, spending more money. You're seeing people book trips for next year like crazy. Just go to any hotel. Go to any cruise line. And listen to their last conference call. They're all going to tell you how everyone's booking like crazy because you're able to get some discounts now. They need that business. But people are booking because they know this is going to go away. They feel more confident. That's why I push my, my Curzio Venture Opportunities newsletter, which focused on small caps. That offer ended Friday. And we had a lot of people sign up. I mean, it was a 6% discount. And I'm glad you signed up. Because you're going to get tons of cool ideas over the next few months. And it just... Four recommendations in the last, what, 40 days? But I'm seeing dozens of small caps trading at market multiples that are similar, again, to just the overall market, yet they're growing 2x to 4x faster than the overall market. And many of these names are still down 20, 30% from their highs, but their quarters, if you listen to them, how good business was, the numbers weren't that good. It was under the radar. Everyone wants to focus, about, focus on, on technology. But man, there's going to be a lot of companies that benefit tremendously after the election, no matter who wins. Because you have all this money filtering into the market. There's so much money people don't know what to do with, right? So much liquidity. It's being forced into the large caps and technology stocks at 30 times forward earnings. That money is going to flow to other places once it's got to flow somewhere. But once we see these COVID stats get better, once we see more people trap, now you're talking about cyclical sectors. Rebounding, you're going to see large caps benefit as well. And e-commerce is still, uh, it, it's going to be amazing business, especially it's still difficult for people over 70 to go out. They're going to be doing a lot of their shopping at home still. Software companies, tech. Again, you're going to see cyclical businesses that were growing pre-COVID. They're going to come back into favor, like infrastructure names. Even banks, believe it or not. 
as bad as it's been. Again, the thesis was banks wasn't that, you know, business was booming. And I'm talking about the large, I'm not talking about Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley, which those earnings are going to skyrocket. Those companies are based on liquidity, volatility. We're going to have that. We had that for a very, very long time. Those companies could do fantastic. But the banks were buying back their stock, which is on hold, and they were raising their dividends, which is on hold. That's going to change. And they're extremely cheap. I wouldn't go with Citigroup. I mean, that was the whole thesis of Citigroup. And we got out of that at a, at a nice profit in our newsletter. Did very well on Citigroup. But the thesis, again, like I mentioned before, guys, I'm willing to change on a dime. The thesis was they're buying 60% of their, their stock back over a three, four-year period, increasing their dividend. So it, it doesn't matter how bad the banking division is because earnings are going to soar because you're buying back so much of it. You have all this cash that's forced to be on your balance sheet due to Dodd-Frank which I guess we're looking at COVID, and, and it was a good thing. But now it doesn't exist, those catalysts. But banks will come into favor, not now. And you could buy some of these things down 30%, 40% from their highs. So position yourself accordingly. This stuff matters. And the fact that they're tearing apart people who just have a positive view on COVID simply because they think he's Trump's guy. It doesn't support their agenda. Look at the facts. Challenge yourself all the time. If I could just challenge you. For me, I always want to hear the other side. Always want to hear the other side. Why do you like Biden? Why do you like Trump? Don't be so closed-minded. Believe me, you want to hear that. Opinion. It's going to make you smarter. It's going to make you invest better. The more information you have, the better it is. You want to research everything to death. And when I look at a stock, when I look at it, I always look at the negatives first. How can I stop out of this position? What's going to happen? That's what I look at first because I'll address that in my write-ups or my videos for my newsletters and say, if this happens, we'll stop out. But the chance of this, not that great, the risk or reward in our favor. That's how you should feel. If you think differently about COVID, do your own research. Send me your research. Believe me, I get it from the top people, non-biased, all over. But send me something. I, I, I have tons of people sending me research, which is great. Maybe you have a new study that I haven't seen that, again, if I've, this isn't an agenda. This isn't me pushing. This is about benefiting you, benefiting us, and making the right decisions. Because our politician, the politics, they, they don't give a shit about us. You have to realize that no matter what side you're on. Anyway, you're going to start sharing lots of stock ideas. It's going to benefit from a Biden win and from a Trump win with my subscribers. And also, names that will benefit or get crushed if the election takes months to be decided, which is a possibility considering the amount of lawyers these guys are hiring right now for this very risk. So you need to pay attention to this.